Hi everyone, welcome to the celebration of International Podcast Day. I am so excited to be here with so many podcasters from around the world, different categories of podcasts. Um, and today they are going to share why they started their podcast, what their podcast is. We're just all celebrating together. Um, I was just talking to them that a podcast takes a lot of work. It is just not something that you get on and do. Um, and it also takes a lot of passion. And today you're gonna hear why they started their podcast, what was their passion, and why they keep going on with their podcast. So I am Felicia Minchaka. I have a podcast called The Healthy Heroes Show. Um, we have been in, in the works for almost two years now. And I started a podcast because of the, the way podcasts had transformed my personal development. When I first started looking to change who I was, change my mindset, I just knew that I needed more. And someone turned me on to podcasts. Um, I'm a mom of two. So I don't have all the time in the world to sit down and read books. <laughs> Even though I love to read books and there's a lot of great authors out there, someone told me, Felicia, why don't you give podcasts a chance? So I started listening to podcasts and I would listen to them on my way to work. I would listen to them when I was in the car at the kids' practices. And I started becoming kind of like an addict for podcasts. It was just filling my cup. I was able to fill other people's cup. It would make me laugh, it would make me cry, it would make me inspired, um, it would give me ideas. So around my third year of listening to podcasts, me and my husband were in Paris and I turned to him and I said, I think I wanna start a podcast. <laughs> and he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, it's changed my life. It's been helping me. I think I have a lot to offer. By that time, I had grown so much, and I knew that it was because of the personal development that I put in in that podcast, in that podcast development. So we started a podcast. Um, my husband is my editor. Um, he did not know what he was doing in the beginning or what he was getting himself into. He was like, well, how are you going to edit it? I was like, well, that's your job. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> Look it up, figure it out. Um, he's like, and what platforms are we going to use? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to talk and I'm just going to share and you're going to figure out the backwards. So he did it. Um, we're a great team. Um, sometimes he will pop in from now and then and, and record a couple episodes. But basically my podcast is about uplifting mindset, confidence, about sharing other people's passions. Some of y'all I have had on my podcast. If not, I will gladly schedule y'all. I just love to share people that are doing positive work in their community. I love to share positive people that are moving forward in life and growing their personal development and helping their community become better people. So I am so glad to be here tonight. I am excited to hear about all the different podcasts tonight. And I'm gonna turn it over to Brenda. Brenda and me have been recording back and forth. I met her through social media. I love what she stands for in her podcast. So Brenda, on that note, you go ahead and take it over. Hey everyone, I'm Brenda with To Serve With Love Podcast and um, I'm out of San Antonio, Texas. And I started this podcast because I got inspired by listening to podcasts and also I wanted to do a podcast that was live. And um, at first I was scared. I had all this energy and I was all pumped up to, to do it. And I was like, yeah, I'm telling everybody. And then here goes the day of the podcast. I'm like, I don't even want to the, push the live button. And I was like, oh my God, so scared to just push that button. I was like, no, no, I'm not going to push it. Um, I'm going to back out. And then I said, okay, you know what? It's now or never. You're going to push that live button. So I pushed it and I was like, and then I did it. And, and when I get nervous, my voice sounds like smaller, like it starts to shrink. It's like a little girl, right? But then I started getting comfortable and then I, I started getting confidence in, in talking. And that's what I also wanted to do. I wanted to learn how to speak, but in live, you know, cause I come from two languages. So sometimes I'm like, not enough, not good enough in English and not enough in good, uh, in Spanish. So I'm like, oh, forget those two languages. <laughs> so, um, so what I do, I just, I just go ahead. I just, 
keep on recording. And my first podcast was a disaster. It, it was because my daughter had a fit during the podcast. She screamed in front of the podcast. And um, it was just horrible. And I cried after that. And then um, I, when it was the next time to do it, I was like, okay, this time it would be better. So I did it again and it was better. So I just told my daughter, go to your room and get on the iPad and, and, uh, and she stays, she stays there until I tell her to, to get out. But, um, but so far I, I like interviewing people who are doing so well for the community, um, motivating, inspiring, um, uplifting people. And, um, I'm really having fun with this podcast. I still get nervous. I, I still get nervous. I do. And, but I'm just continuing and growing. And um, what I want to do in the future is, is have like this big fair where um, there's a podcast once a year, like a live, like a national podcast once a year. And everybody um, brings in some, their own podcast and everybody can get interviewed whoever signs up and ha it's a big event where people can eat hot dogs and hamburgers and, and stuff like that. <laughs> that's what I want to do. So that's oh, my God. podcast. And Brenda, you're rocking and rolling with your podcast. I love your soul. I love your generosity and I love what you stand for. So Thank on you. that note, we're going to get started tonight and I'm going to introduce a buddy of mine. I've known him for a while. Um, Daniel Gomez, can you put your camera on and share with us? <laughs> and he is going to share all about himself. Daniel is a rock star. He is so uplifting um, when you hear him talk. And he just has so much to share with you. So Daniel, you there? Daniel, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I'm in the, I'm driving, so me for my bed. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. No, I said, forgive me. I left an event. That's why I had my picture up because I, my, the lighting is bad in the car where I'm at. So please forgive me for that. But no, I love, uh, I love Felicia. My name's Daniel Gomez. And, you know, out of everything that's negative, something good always happens. And we don't realize why things happen in life. And three years ago when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, I thought I had it figured out, right? I thought my house was paid off. I had money in the bank. But little did I know when my wife was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer that shit just hit everything, right? It was, didn't matter how much success I had in work. It wasn't going to save her. But I didn't realize how much junk I had inside myself. I didn't realize what I needed to fix. And I think podcasts really helped me to realize what was wrong with me. And I say that because I was very selfish. I was very ambitious, and through the process that I've been through these past three years, it's really just helped me to realize that there, first of all, there's there's everybody out there that wants to help you, and when COVID happened, you know, I'm a professional speaker. I, I've shared the stage with Les Brown and Tom Bilyeu, but I, I tell you that because I'm just a little kid from the south side of San Antonio. I know what it's like to eat cereal with water, and... My friend goes, well, what are you going to do? Dude, you just lost like 10 speaking engagements, which translates to a lot of income. And I said, you know, God's been putting on my heart to start a podcast. And I think I need to do this. I need to do it. He goes, you know what you're doing? I said, no, I'm scared. <laughs> like Brenda, right? You're scared. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. I can speak on stage all day long with the best of them. But being in front of a camera was just not easy to do. So when I realized that it's about the audience and serving and giving, is when my whole demeanor changed and I think about how many people can I impact even just one of the days and and I love people and that's what it's about and I want to give everybody in this in this zoom call right now kudos because you're doing something that 97 percent of the world's not doing you're doing it so don't ever under under undervalue what you're doing don't ever undervalue who you are because the fact that you're doing it and you've been consistent with it you're changing lives out there. And I thank you, Felicia. I know um, you've, you send out messages on, on Instagram and sometimes I don't respond. I was traveling yesterday. I was in, I was in Dallas the last two days, but I, I mean that from my heart. Everybody here brings value. 
And I want you to celebrate those small wins because once you start celebrating those small wins, then you really start enjoying doing your podcast and you say like, man, I'm actually doing it. Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, the biggest critic in my, in my life was myself. And like Brenda, I would be like, well, who wants to listen to me, right? Who wants to listen to Daniel Gomez? And little did I know that somebody did find value because somebody out there is drowning. And guess what? Your podcast is their life jacket. Let me say it again. Somebody out there is drowning in San Antonio across this world. And your podcast is their life jacket. So don't ever undervalue who you are. And those days that you don't feel like recording, those are the days that you're going to impact the, the world the most because as soon as you press the record button, you're getting out of your own selfishness and you're giving back and God is going to bless you back a hundredfold. And before you know it, you're going to start impacting a bigger audience and a bigger audience and a bigger audience. And I just want to say thank you everybody here for being a podcaster because it's not an easy gig. And the fact that you're doing it just says that there's a lot there's a lot more success in front of you so if no one's ever told you they believe in you this is daniel gomez saying i believe in you and i appreciate you i told you you were gonna love him <laughs> every time i hear daniel talk he uplifts me too thank you daniel for that and on that i'm going to turn it over to jennifer i just met jennifer last night i posted in one of the san antonio podcast groups who wanted to be part of this? That's something that I love just to get to know different podcasts everywhere. And Jennifer responded right away. So I'm going to let her tell you all about her podcast experience. She has quite a bit, which I was overwhelmed. And I was just like, wow, this lady needs to talk on podcast <laughs> international day. So Jennifer, I'll hand it to you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia, for putting this together. So my podcast experience goes back to uh, late 2005. I heard about this thing called podcasting and I was like, hmm, you mean I can record something, put it up on the web and no one can stop me? Pfft, sign me up. And so my sister and I did a show back then called The Morning Brewcast and we would just drink coffee and talk about coffee and that would be it. And we wound up getting so many fans from Brazil and the Philippines who were telling us, oh, you really understand coffee. We were like, we're just two girls from Texas who like to drink coffee and talk. But that really showed me the power of podcasting. And of course, back in those early days, it was just a bunch of us early adopter geeks. It wasn't, if I spoke about podcasting at a business event, people you know, would look at me like I was speaking Klingon. Same thing with social media. So all of this kind of came together. And something that I started as a curiosity and as a hobby has turned into what I do for a living. Um, I do podcast production for agencies, for clients. Um, I work with um, nonprofits and for-profits to help them run their social media and do their live events. So there's a lot that can be done here. And as you're developing your voice, as you're developing your skill set, um, there's going to be a lot of folks out there who want to hire you. And so, you know, have courage that if you're getting um, criticisms from people around you who say that you're wasting your time on this podcasting thing, um, I got told that too. And now I make a very good living doing that thing that was wasting my time. So let me encourage you in that way that keep pressing forward. Now, I was doing this when no one knew what I was talking about, when I was speaking Klingon. Nowadays, the whole world knows about podcasting. So if you're just getting started, if you're new to it, or if you've been doing it a few years and you're wanting to turn it from a hobby into a career, I'm here to tell you it can be done. And especially now, because um, it's a lot easier now than it was back then. Let me talk to you a little bit about what my main focus is here today. Um, back in 2007, I started something called National Podcast Post Month, NAPOD POMO. And that's 30 podcasts in 30 days in the month of November. So from November 1st to November 30th. I started it because I heard about this thing called NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writers Month. And they write 50,000 words in a month. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of cool. Let me, go do, let me go join the one for podcasting. And there wasn't one. And I was shocked because there was one for blogging, Nablo Pomo. There was one for video, Nablo Pomo. But there wasn't one for podcasting. So three days before November 1st in 2007, I was like, I think I'm going to create this. I bought the domain that, and just went. Um, and all of a sudden, here we are, 13 years later, and people have written books, they've launched careers, they've done a lot of things because they participated in the 30 days of NAPOD POMO. NAPOD POMO is a community event. It's always free. It's something that we gather around once a year and do this amazing marathon of podcasting, and then we're done. And then we wrap it up. We say, we say goodbye until we see each other again next year. 
And I've always thought of International Podcast Day as being that, that kind of that lead in to NAPOD POMO because it focuses the world's attention on podcasting. And it's also when I focus my attention that by the fact that, oh, hey, in a little, in about a month, <laughs> we're going to be kicking off 30 days of podcasting. And so then we start talking about it. So we have a Facebook group. It's open. You can go to napodpomo.org. And I, I heard um, what you were saying about uh, you want to get a, an, a, an event together. I will tell you, San Antonians, that in San Antonio, we were the very first city in Texas to hold a podcasting conference back in 2007. And it was called um, t uh, San Antonio PodCon. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and it was, it was amazing and it's grown from there. And so we did that for a few years. Last year, um, I ran Texas PodCon. We had people come in from all over the country and come to San Antonio and speak. So there is a hunger and there's a fire for these kinds of things. Do it. Um, as, as Felicia said, she came into the San Antonio podcasting group. That's a group I started back in 2005. Now that was before Facebook. So, you know, the group is not, hasn't been that long on Facebook, but as an organization in San Antonio, podcasting has been around for a bit. And so I'm super excited to see you all here because uh, podcasting is alive and well and San Antonio has a definite uh, footprint on this. And it was actually PodCamp San, PodCamp San Antonio. All of a sudden my mind just clicked PodCamp San Antonio. So if you look that up, you'll see some stuff. And we got on the news and we were in the paper and it was a lot of fun, but the opportunity for you to really grow your business is huge. An opportunity for you to grow your podcast is huge. And you may not necessarily make money running your show, although you can, where you could really make money is helping others learn to do what you have done. And it's a really great way to learn, share, grow. And that's the way I operate. I operate everything on the learn, share, grow model because I live in an abundant mindset. So the more that we all know, the better that we can all do. So thank you. All right, Jennifer, I'm like, looks like I'm so glad I posted in that group <laughs> and got to meet you. Thank you, Jennifer, for that. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Garcia. He is one of the hosts of the 210 Culture Podcast. I actually worked with them in a collaboration, um, and he's going to tell you all about the 210 Culture Podcast, which I absolutely love what they're doing in San Antonio. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, so my name is uh, Hinato, but everybody refers to me as G because it's easier to pronounce. So um, yeah, we started the 210 Culture Podcast based off the fact that when we would do our video, because we do a lot of foodie videos, when we'd finish, my co-host, which is my wife and my best friend, we would sit home, sitting around the table, and we're just talking like, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? And it was just local stories that we would see like on Facebook and stuff. And one day I was just like, why are we not recording this? I think we are kind of funny enough where people would enjoy it um, there. So we started in the kitchen. Uh, we still have pictures where we're in the kitchen with a snowball microphone, just one little microphone and we're all shared across it. And I was like, let's try it, which is one of my favorite um, quotes is just, why not? So I was like, let's give it a shot. If it's terrible, nobody likes it. We just wasted an hour. It's not a big deal that we were already wasting. Um, and we took the chance. We did it. Uh, we got lucky that it was a uh, Ginobili day in town. So we actually had Spurs homie who dresses up with the Spurs mask was actually our guest because I was friends with him and we were hanging out that day. And I was like, you want to be on with us? He's like, yeah, sure. So then the first couple of episodes that were just kind of out there and wild. And then my wife finally started listening to what we were doing. And she's like, y'all need some structure. So she came in. She's like, now we're going to have an actual program of what to talk about. And then the guests just started rolling in slowly just by um, one of my friends was like, you want to be on and be one of our guests and then somebody else until one of our Instagram followers was like, can I be a guest? I have a business. I can talk about it. And then we morphed to now where we would bring guests in to let them promote their business in a platform that people don't know exists. So we do everything from comedians, musicians, uh, homemakers. We even had a yard sale manager, which was interesting because I've never heard of a yard sale manager. Um, and then from there, we we're like, uh, we live out in Converse, so we're like, it's kind of far to get people to come out and be our guests. So uh, thankfully, we had reached out to Southtown and they had space at Pub Sports. So they asked us if we wanted to join them. So now we do it live from Pub Sports, and then we just re we do the live broadcast on Sundays, and then Monday we repost the audio through all the platforms. And it's just been great seeing the reception from everybody around town that just loves the fact that we're giving opportunities. And a lot of them are like, nobody even knows I existed. And now like people are hitting me up for their cookies or 
their shirts or their stuff. Um, I know a lot of people that, that are like, oh, cool, you have this person on. I was looking for a, a shirt maker. Let me reach out to them or a craftsperson. So it's just enjoyable seeing what we can do there. Um, I'm excited future-wise because we've actually started branching off into two more podcasts um, off of this. So my wife is really into murder mysteries. So she started her own murder mystery on YouTube called uh, Texosity. So it's all local murder mysteries from Texas. And then I'm a big wrestling fan. So I started an AEW um, wrestling podcast with one of my, one of a popular chef here in town. Me and him are big wrestling fans. So we have that going now. So now we got three podcasts on top of what we filmed. So it's, it's a busy schedule, but I love it. Um, but yeah, it's one of those, uh, like I was saying in the beginning, uh, don't be afraid to try it. And everything's stuck so far and, and we love it. And we just love being a part of the podcast community and getting to hang out with you guys today. That's wonderful. I need to check out your wife's murder history or murder mysteries for sure, <laughs> especially during Halloween. Tell her to blow that up right now because yeah, she's talking about doing market. she's talking about doing um every other week the murder mystery and then another one being like a short story to kind of balance out because she's doing it bi weekly right now. But she's like, for October, I want to put an episode out every week, so she's working on that there too. I like it. Thank you so much, G, for sharing with us. And I am going to go ahead and bring on Martha. Martha is another podcaster that I have collaborated with. Um, and I absolutely love her podcast. And she's going to tell you all about it. Martha, you're talking and I can't hear you. Unmute yourself. There you go, babe. There. Can you hear me now? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Martha Hasso. And I am the hostess of uh, the Tools podcast. It's a Spanglish podcast that I do. Um, based around the details that I grew up with, which are mostly um, just kind of, you know, either sayings or like um, just life lessons, you know. And so what I usually do is to share a story of mine um, based on the detail and uh, how it applied to me, how would I learn from it. The reason I started this was because I've always been just a very good listener, which hence, you know, I... I love to talk, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love to talk and I have a lot to say, but I've always been a really good listener. And for the most part, a lot of my friends have always reached out to me to kind of, you know, just share their stories and stuff. And I always found myself giving them advice um, that my mom would give me, you know, and that my grandma would give me. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm like, I sound like my mother, you know? But um, I was gonna say fiddle, <laughs> but it worked, you know? And they would just tell me like, oh, what does that mean? You know, what does this detail mean? Or what, you know, like, what does it translate to English? And so I would give them the definition and how it applied in my life, just give them a little scenario and they would just be happy about it. You know, they felt like there's some sort of connection that someone else is going through it. You know, especially coming from a Hispanic family, you know, we tend to be like very dramatic sometimes, you know, and you're just like, oh my God, like I can't talk to anyone here in the family because everyone's going to know my business. Um, you know, if I confide in some one person, it's going to be like all over the family, right? So I was just like, <laughs> at least that's how it is in my household, you know? So I was like, who can I talk to? And I think a lot of my friends, that's what they felt too. You know, they had that connection of like, I need to find someone who will listen to me and someone who can maybe just kind of give me some sort of advice. And it started with the Instagram posts. I started doing Instagram posts throughout um, for a while, you know, just details, like different details and then translation and then like a little story time. And people were like, why don't you just do a podcast? And I was like, well, it had, you know, the seed was planted there. And much like Brenda, you know, I didn't had no idea where to even start. You know, I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts, like when I'm working, but I was like, where do I start? So, you know, I just have no idea, like no one. Right. And like, it was really hard for me to connect to people, podcasters in, in particular here in San Antonio, because I really didn't know anyone, you know, it's just like, I don't, I can't even ask anyone for advice, you know, like, how do they record? What do they record on? Um, you know, what are the platforms that they go on? Um, who would even want to listen to this? I was like, I speak like Spanglish, you know, like not everyone's like going to understand my podcast. So it's very like the very niche, you know, like very particular. And I was like, I don't know, this is a great idea, but um, you know, we are in San Antonio, we are in Texas. And so far I've gotten really good feedback from everyone. And um, yeah, I can't believe I've already been doing it for two years and I'm still having fun doing it. So yeah.
I'm like, I los mio, I told you you're the lover. <laughs> I was cracking up when you said I speak Spanish. <laughs> and I have cracked up all the time. You always make me laugh when I listen to your podcast. Thank you, Martha, for sharing that. I love it. So I'm going to turn it over to Dre and Joe. I have been collaborating with Jay uh, or Dre for quite a bit. He makes me laugh too. Sometimes the things he'll text me back. I'm like, you're fine, Dre. <laughs> and this is my first time meeting Joe, his co-host. So I'm going to turn him over to you guys and let them do their thing. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Dre. Um, I have, I'm a, I'm a host. I'm the host of the Minority Report uh, podcast um, and a co-host of a cup of Joe with Dre, and I do that with my co-host Joe. So, um, just a little history: how I got into podcasting. Listen to podcasting for about um, I don't know six years now. Um, I just love it. I love podcasting. I love listening. I love information. I love gathering information. I love to learn. Um, I figure the best way to do that is I, mean, I travel a lot, so I just throw it on in the car and I just zone out to whatever podcast I'm listening to. Um, so. Long story short, I'm a, I'm a life coach. So I have a lot of uh, time with clients, uh, different clients. I was a dating coach for Match.com at a, one point in time. So I pretty much wanted to take all those experience and um, just pr provide dialogue. And um, I figured a lot, of the, a lot of my clients that come to me, we all have a lot of the same issues in life. Um, so I figured I would just put that out on, a, um, on, a, on my platform and let the world hear it so we could pretty much help other people help other people grow um and that's a pretty much that's pretty much it as far as the minority report is concerned um from there my man joe hit me up he had a podcast idea joe and i were from clean texas so we uh we just figured we collaborate and joe i'll let you take it from here bro sure no thank you uh first of all um everybody for being here it's definitely a blessing to meet other fearless people because what we do is a fearless thing. Like people look at us and see that they could do what we do, but honestly, when they try to do it, they can't. So, um, yeah, no, we started the Cup of Joe podcast uh, in the June, and from there it skyrocketed. I had an idea when um, I was thinking about a podcast like eight years ago, and every time that I would try to do it, it would just get hidden behind or something would happen or self-doubt or life or whatever it is, you know, and uh, COVID happened and all of this free time. And I decided, I said, now's the time. A, because I have all these emotions and feelings inside of my head that I need to get out. But then also, if I'm feeling this way, people need to hear that. And I just connected with Dre and I said, you know, who's going to be fearless? Who's going to be able to be honest and be open? Because in this time that we all have, a lot of us are dealing with depression. A lot of us are dealing with sadness, losing our jobs, or just even just having somebody to communicate. And then that's when we decided to do the podcast. And at first it was supposed to be a relationship thing, you know, where we could be the smooth guys and, you know, coach girl, coach guys how to talk to girls or right, you know, right. let the ladies know the inside secret of what's going on. But it became more than that. And we felt like we had more to offer. You know, we both have these, these um, engaging stories that people need to listen to. And also, um, we needed to help ourselves. Sometimes I listen to our podcast over, and it's hard and it's difficult because it's me dealing with my own trauma. And, but it helps me. And I know if it helps me, it helps others. So, I mean, it, it's just been a blessing. And I, I, again, I thank you all for just uh, being here and just hearing your story, because again, it, it brings me back as somebody that's newer to this, that the more you do it, the more you're going to learn, the more people you're going to impact, and the more you're going to grow. So I appreciate all of y'all, and I thank y'all for having us here. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you. you. Jay, or thank you, Dre and Joe. We appreciate that. And I'm going to bring on Eileen. I actually love Eileen. Her podcast is amazing, and she's going to go ahead and tell you all about it. Thank you, Felicia. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. 
Um, so I'm Eileen. I'm here in San Antonio, Texas, right on the northeast side of it. Um, but I grew up a military brat, so the military is what brought me to San Antonio, and I've been here ever since. Um, my podcast is Life and Curly Cues with me, Eileen. Um, and that's typically how I start it. I started my podcast back in February of 2019, so I'm still pretty new or at least I feel like I'm still pretty new to the whole podcast world. Um, my interest started because of the YouTubers that I followed. They started making podcasts, and so I started listening to their podcast. Um, specifically, David Dobrik. I was I was infatuated with him and that concept. If you guys know who he is, um, and I just loved how comedic it was and everything, and so I was drawn to it. But I didn't really know. Um, much else it's besides it's just people talking and you just listen to it when you have time to listen to. And so from that point on, I then went over to a conference for Latinx content creators in Miami back in 2018. And from that point, I attended a session about podcasting, actually a couple, and I was just overthrown with all the different ideas. And I was there with my mother who runs a nonprofit for military spouses. And we were like, oh, we could do a podcast for your spouses. We could do a podcast for the military community. We could do this. We could do that. And then I, my selfish self was just like, or I could do one for myself and just talk all I want to talk about. <laughs> and so I took everything in from that conference, and as soon as I came back to San Antonio, I was just like, I want to do this. Uh, it's going to take time because I have to save money so I can buy the equipment for it. I had just graduated college, so I was trying to figure out what I was doing with my life, which then led me to the theme of the podcast, which is a podcast about talking about the adulting world and all the different experiences we have um, as early or as late. Um, I know I interviewed my mom and she's still figuring out how to be an adult and she's in her forties. So a lot of just talking about buying your first car, moving into a house, buying a house, um, graduating college. I've interviewed my brothers who are both in that college area, college timeline. Sorry, I can't talk sometimes. So this is hard for me. <laughs> um, so I just decided that I wanted to talk about adulting and the different experiences I have personally um, going through and kind of figuring out the world for myself. So before I started the podcast, I started a Facebook blog and I was just writing out what I thought, sharing my stories. Um, I'm not much of a writer and reader, so it didn't feel right to me. I'm very kinesthetic, audit auditory, so I really liked it because it was keeping me busy and building like my experience with it but I was like this isn't what my final destiny is meant to be and so finally I had saved up enough money I bought my first little mixer and my first little microphone and I recorded a teaser in February of 2019 I debuted Life in Curly Cues I've been filming episodes ever since I um, am in a hiatus right now because Surprisingly, like some people, a lot of people actually I know started a podcast during the beginning of COVID because they were at home. I, on the other hand, stopped recording episodes during COVID just because I started to work from home and I was very busy with everything else. And so I'm trying to get back into it and also figuring out because I, the reason I loved working with, love working with podcasts is because I like to sit with the people and have a conversation and we just talk about our experiences. I'll interview my friends about their experiences and then we'll just talk about any and everything that's going on either in the world or in pop culture and society, anything like that. And I liked having that contact with them and COVID messed all of that up. So I was in a funk of trying to figure out how I can interview people and not lose my motivation to do so. Um, so I'm getting back into that. I figured it out. I did a couple phone interviews and a couple FaceTime interviews. So hopefully getting back into that now that I've kind of settled and figured out how my schedule works. Um, 
I lost my train of thought. Oh, um, future things I'm excited for. I'm excited to just get back into it. I've hit my funk and I'm ready to start back over. And also excited that I'm meeting all of you guys because now I have more people that I can reach out to and see if you guys would want to collaborate and do a podcast episode and share your experiences entering adulthood or if you're still trying to figure that out. Um, Because I've only ever interviewed friends or coworkers or people I've met um, and had very close relationships with. So I would love to reach out and actually bring more people into my uh, Curly Q's community. And that's pretty much it. I don't really have any favorite quotes about podcasting. I just love the fact that you can talk about whatever you want and however long you want, whether people listen or don't listen, you're venting. And that's like, for me, it's an outlet because I love to talk once I'm very comfortable with it. So that's pretty much everything for me. All right. Well, I'm going to introduce some of the Latina podcasters because that's part of the group I'm in. And there were so many and I was like, I posted who wanted to be on a Zoom meeting for National Podcast Day. And so many responded and I could just couldn't keep up. <laughs> so the first one is Christy Lasso. Introduce Hi. yourself, girlfriend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And yes, I am a Latina podcaster. And I'm noticing it seems like most of you are from San Antonio. I'm in Toronto. <laughs> so I feel a little bit out of <laughs> um, but it's awesome. It's so awesome to meet you all and uh have the opportunity to network with you. Um, so my podcast is Vida with Christy, and it is a podcast that influences parents to live their best life while raising aware and empowered children. So the reason why I decided to start a podcast, well, originally I was a blogger. I started blogging in 2010 and I started, my career is in communications industry. So I'm a digital marketing strategist, uh, but I started in the PR sector and because I got into fashion PR, I felt like I was Lauren Conrad, like I was like a Latina Lauren Conrad, you know, going to fashion shows and all those things. So I was like, I have to blog about this. I have to share this. Like my life is cool. So, <laughs> so um, I started a blog, but as I grew, I was growing out of that blog right? As I, as I became an adult, as Eileen was saying, right? I started adulting. So um, I felt that, you know, it didn't really match anymore. My career trajectory had also changed. I got married. I became a mother. Um, so I, I really still wanted to practice that natural creative flair that I have um, outside of my career because naturally I'm just a creative person. However, my career, it's very, you know, in line with the brands I'm working with. So I wanted to do my own thing. If I wanted to make it multicolored, I could make it multicolored. I don't have to follow brand guidelines or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, that's how basically I decided, you know, I'm going to start a blog. Maybe I'll get into video, but then I was like, everyone's doing video. I don't want to do video because, you know, what's the next big thing? So I did a bit, a little bit of research and I discovered podcasts. And because I'm a commuter, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and I said, you know what, I think I can do this. Um, if it's not obvious, I'm a talker. So, <laughs> so I was like, yes, I can do this. And funny enough, I remember back in elementary school, um, I was social butterfly and, you know, I was the one that disrupted the class. And I remember in like, way back then, my friends would always say, oh, Christy's going to be like the next Oprah because she never stops talking. You know? <laughs> and I always felt like they were they were doing that to kind of tease me but they were like friendly teasing but I always felt like you know what like maybe that's that's what I should be doing someday you know I should become the next Oprah and um and yeah it always stuck with me and coincidentally now that I'm podcasting I'm interviewing people I even do like just my solo episodes um it's been awesome it's been awesome so yes I totally understand what Martha was talking about in this sense of the Spanglish um, because that's such a huge identity for me and I was thinking about how do I 
bring that in, right? Um, so what I've been doing is on certain episodes where it applies, I've been doing Spanish segments, which has been very, very interesting. And it's been a lot of fun to do. And I usually do them at the end of my episode. So that way, English, my English audience can just cut off and then my Spanish audience can like continue listening kind of thing. And um, that's been a lot of fun. Fun. And I find that the Spanish really, really applies because of the topic of my podcast, which is, as I feel like as a Latina mom, I'm breaking the mold in a lot of the things that I'm doing with my daughter and the way that I'm raising her. I've done a lot of unlearning and I'm still doing a lot of unlearning, a lot of learning. Um, and I follow a very honest parenting approach. So my daughter is five and she can tell you how babies are made like better than a grown adult you know <laughs> um she I've like you know she's a little like social activist and she's just brilliant and that's how I'm bringing her up you know and um I love what Joe had mentioned you know a lot of the times your episodes it's you hear back and you see how you've even grown or you're broken through something in one of your episodes and you don't even realize it right um because you are learning so much like I always say my parents uh, did the best they could with me with the, the, the skills and, and knowledge that they had. But, but me as a parent now, I get to take a step back and look outside and, you know, teach my daughter maybe differently. Um, so that's what really my podcast is about. So it's a lot of honesty. It's a lot of lessons, but it's a lot of laughs, too. Um, I think it's just because my natural energy <laughs> just gets silly sometimes and I get sassy on it. Um, but yeah, in regards to seeing where it goes, um, I would love for it to keep growing. I sometimes, you know, I have that little bit of like imposter syndrome where I'm like, oh, I would love to do this full time sometime. And I would love to, you know, partner um, with some really awesome brands or even like write a book one day. But then I feel like, oh, maybe like just four people are listening to me. Like who cares about my podcast, you know? <laughs> but, um, but then I have to check myself and I have to remind myself like, many of you have mentioned, you know, what we're doing here is such valuable and important work. Um, no matter what our topic is, right? Um, we're doing amazing work. And I, and we do have to check ourselves and realize that even if four people are listening, like I love um, what Daniel had mentioned, you know, even if a few people are listening, like you're getting through someone. And that's really beautiful, right? Um, and I even felt I find that even with like my following, I feel like I should have a million followers. But then I think about the followers that I do have are so loyal and that's so beautiful compared to like a million followers who really don't care about me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just where I'm at um, in regards to where I can, you can find my podcast everywhere pretty much. Um, but Viva with Christy.com is my website. So all of my content lives on there. Sometimes I do videos and sometimes I do the random blog posts, but lately I've just been focused on my podcasts. Um, originally I started in 2018. I started on New Year's Day, but because I was struggling with, I, I just wanted, I, at first I just really, really wanted listeners. And I found that I was doing a bunch of things to try to like get everyone to listen. But then I had to take a step back and think like, I have to find my niche. I have to find what I really love and what I can really bring to the table. So I did a total rebrand and I started fresh which was really, really scary. And I did that earlier this year. And I'm really glad I did because now I feel like my podcast is truly where I want it to be. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> so the next Latina I'm gonna bring up is Myra Garcia. Hello, hello. Um, I'm Mayra and I have, um, I just started podcasting. My, my podcast launched last week. Um, it's called All Things Money, and um, let's see, I'm a financial coach. I love talking about money. I love inspiring others to become debt-free. I um, started learning about Dave Ramsey back in 2010. I became debt-free in 2012, and in 2017, I became a certified financial coach through his program, so um, I've been coaching for three years now but I've been thinking about a podcast for over a year and I was like okay that's it I gotta do it so um started researching how I could do this and how I could possibly monetize this in the future or, you know even if I just can get through the like know and trust factor easier so people understand like my story get to know me 
and um, really get to see my heart and where I come from, like, I just want to help you. Like, I just want to be able to get you to live a debt-free lifestyle. Like, it's so cool to not have any debt. Like, it's so cool. Like, I want to make it cool. <laughs> it's so hard because it's like, debt is so normal. And um, that's what I was taught. I mean, I was never taught, you know, to manage money. It's it, Money is a taboo topic in the Latino community. So that was, you know, one of my biggest um, I was like, okay, I got to do this. I'm originally from East Los Angeles, California, and I now live in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, but let's see, what was the, I had the questions up. They just came down. Hold on. Um, so I told you guys why I started my podcast. Um, so I have it under education and business because I'm going to be focusing on um, personal and business finance. So I hope to have, like right now, it's just a solo uh, podcast, but I'm going to have guests once a month and I'm going to have um, attorneys that are going to talk about why contracts are important, why it's important to have an LLC, why, you know, when and why you should have a trademark and all these things for small business. So I'm only, only going to do that about once a week, but overall, I'm going to be talking about just personal finance and how to be wise with money. And that's my, um, that's my goal for that. Um, what can my audience expect? Um, just to get a real life, like it's okay to not have everything together as long as you're moving progressively towards the goal and getting certain things in order with your money. Um, you know, you evolved as you start learning how to manage your money wisely um, but definitely inspiring the little ones. I have two kids. So, um, teaching kids about money and how to manage it wisely at a young age is super important and, um, something I'm really trying to push at home. Um, and let's see my, the future. Um, I'm really excited because like, I've recorded a couple episodes now and I have a couple like just in the back burner, but I'm like, this is super fun. <laughs> I'm loving it. I don't know why I didn't get into this sooner. Like I thought about this like a year ago. Why didn't I push sooner? Anyway, you know, God knows why I have no idea, but I'm now and, and I'm loving this. I hope to uh, one day be able to work full time um, doing my side hustle. I work full time doing something else. So um, yeah, that's what I plan to do. I see Maria's here. I actually recorded a podcast with her last night. She had me on her show. But so excited to meet you all. I'm, I would love to follow all the podcasts. I love to listen to things while I'm on my day job. I'm able to multitask listen to things because I do monotonous work like I don't even have to think about my job I literally like sort of data entry all day so it's nice to have all the different podcasts and get to know you know each and every one of you thank you Myra thank you I love that I love what you said so the next podcaster I also met her at the Latina podcast group Maria Take it away, girl. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I am Maria. My podcast is the Cafe y Consejos podcast. Um, I've only been doing it for two months now. I just finished my first season and my second season uh, launches next week. And I'm excited. I literally had no idea what I was doing. A um, little background, my experience is all in healthcare. I've been doing healthcare for 20 plus years now. And I, after being laid off uh, in July, thanks to COVID, um, I was like, well, now I can try something new and be that creative that I've always wanted to be. Um, it, the idea kind of came to me after a meditation session where I was reminded of a um, a memory where I was at a similar crossroads 20 years ago trying to figure out what I wanted to do in my life and uh, 
having coffee with my tia and coming out of this conversation with her feeling, you know, supported and loved and like I had a sense of direction. And after that, that's when I decided to go into nursing school. Um, so then I decided, well, you know what? I'm an aunt now. I've been an aunt for a year. So it's like a really exciting new role for me. And I said, I think this might be my greater purpose is to not just be an example to my nephew, but to be an example to my people and what better outlets than to use than my voice and do a podcast. Cause I've had friends who have told me, well, you should do a podcast because people always come to me for help, for advice and whatnot, so I decided to do it. I um, I reached out to a friend who I knew was doing her own and asked her how she started. And you know, I literally just jumped into the pool without knowing how to swim and here I am and I'm loving it. It's been such a blessing. And I did, yes, I did a recording with Maida yesterday, which is amazing. And I'm, it's one of the things that I'm really excited about meeting all these new creatives and other Latinas and Latinos just being able to connect. And it's it really has been giving me so much more life. And I don't know, one of the things you can probably expect is feeling like you're on the porch with me drinking a cup of coffee and listening to me have that conversation with a guest and talk about so many different things. And yesterday we, the topic was with Maya was money uh, sex, dating, work, life, health. I also do tarot readings. I'm, a, I'm also an ordained minister, an interfaith minister. So spirituality will be another aspect to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, one of the things that I'm excited about, I would like to make this a full-time gig. That would be amazing. Um, because job searching during the pandemic was really terrible <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, just being doing this has just been giving me so much life. And this is definitely my new purpose for sure. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Maria, for sharing. And the next Latina podcaster is Belen Namaya. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everybody. good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is. <laughs> My name is Belen. I am the host and creator of What Dichos. I'm actually really excited that I got to meet, that I'm seeing Martha because I was listening to her podcast, which gave me an inspiration to start my podcast. Um, so it's a little similar, but I'm actually so excited. I'm like having like a fangirl moment right now. Like, oh, I get to see her. <laughs> um, so what they chose, I actually launched my first episode um, on July 3rd. And it was an idea that I came up with my son in last year. So last year, um, I had a really rough year. They, every every year on my birthday, I always get really upset, really worried. I started like getting all like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life kind of thing. And um, I was talking to my son and he and I, like we joke around about a lot of things and he always makes fun about how old I am, even though I'm only 33. And um, he was, I asked him like, hey, you know, it'd be really funny if we started a podcast. And he looked at me, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, what is that? And, you know, like, well, you watch YouTube videos. So it's like the same thing, except that you're not seeing anybody. And he's like, well, who's going to like, listen to us? I'm like, I don't know, like five people, who cares? You know, like, at least we'll, at least we'll have time, like to spend time and talk to each other. And he's like, okay, that's cool. And my um, intention was for him to use it as a as a way as like a side project now that he's in high school like you know this is going to be the topic of your college entrance essays <laughs> like I started a podcast you know with my with my mom um but we, we we talked about it and I spent like months and months thinking about an idea and actually didn't do anything related to a podcast until the next year and I started, I did like a trailer in February. And then from there, I just let it go for a little while. And it, and the question came up like, well, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? And so I sat down with him again. I said, hey, we had this idea. Let's actually do it. Um, and he said, okay, he's actually not a permanent co-host of my podcast anymore because um, 
he's my he's my stepson so he, he ends up spending half of his time with his his mom and then half the time with us so it's a little hard to coordinate scheduling um but he has shown up on my podcast a few times before so the purpose of my podcast what they chose um similar to martha is like i wanted to connect the stories that i sh that my, my mom and my parents told us and those idioms of what those meanings are um, and I've actually said these details to my kids and they, they completely go over their head. They're like, what are you talking about? Um, you know, the sana sana colita rana, but there's this one story that my mom would always tell us regarding, uh, feeding, feeding travelers, like how you have unexpected guests and you suddenly you have food and you're, you're obviously cooking and they show up in the middle of dinner. What do you do? Do you offer them your dinner that was only meant for your family or do you offer them this dinner that, and you'll suddenly be left with less. And so it's just a story of teaching my kids not to be selfish. And in the end, to spoil the story for you, this family in the base, according to my mom, she said that this family hid the food. And once these travelers left um, and she pulled the food out, it was covered with maggots and it was spoiled and it was gross. And so I told this story to the kids to not to freak them out, but really to tell them like, Hey, it's okay to share with me your bag of hot Cheetos that you don't want to share with me right now. <laughs> so, so that was the, the goal, the intention, what inspired me. And, and so they always tell me like, where do you come up with these stories? Like, this is weird. And their automatic response is like, what? <laughs> like just what? And so I just, um, I wanted to find something that, that really resonated and I wanted to do it in Spanish and English. Um, and so I do find each uh, my main consultant is my mom. I ask her, uh, what does she think? What is her opinion about a certain dicho? And she'll always be like, well, mi mamá decía, my mom would say this. So it's really a generational thing. And one of the, one of the things that I like about podcasting is, is that oral history, that oral tradition that is continuing, but in a modern scape, you know, usually moral um, oral stories were told around a fireplace or within a small family dynamic and those stories stay within that family but now with the advancement of technology and the connection of society podcasting has really allowed these small groups of families small groups everywhere to connect with these stories and now I get to hear about everybody everywhere you know and and I'm really excited about that and so for the future, I don't know. Um, I get really excited when I get like a like, when I get a follow. So I, I like, I literally jump up in the air every time anything happens. And um, I'm, I'm actually really happy. And I get scared every single time I hit record. Like for every single time I hit record for the first 15, 30 seconds, I am just nervous. And then I just talk with um, whomever I'm talking to. And I connected with a lot of people, friends, mostly co-workers, and I, I, we find a dicho, um, they share me their dicho that, they, that has inspired them and what, what has really been their guiding light through whatever challenges that they've been through and, and how they've been able to get to certain points in the, their life now. So I'm so excited. I'm glad that I got to share all this with you. Um, available on Instagram, Facebook, market, you know, everything, all excited. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Belen, for sharing. Thank you. Um, Stacy, did you want to say anything? I'll try, but sorry, guys. Hi, I'm so sick. Um, it's the worst time to get sick, too, because everybody's going to assume you have COVID if you start coughing and hacking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Luckily, no COVID. Uh, I actually have a podcast that I co-host with three other amazing people and it's beautiful to hear all your experiences um ours aren't really enlightening we just it's four comedians just talking a lot of crap about current topics and florida because florida has the best news apparently um but <laughs> uh the best thing that i love about having a podcast is getting to meet new people and interacting with people that are established in the industry we have had in the past two weeks, two Emmy-nominated uh, guests. We have had, we're gonna have a Playboy Bunny in about two weeks, who is now a comedian, a stand-up comedian. I don't know how that happened. Um, but it's, it's, it's great. I, I actually, hearing every, everything you guys have mentioned makes me wanna be like, oh, 
hey guys, can I get your podcast links? Like, I'm going to probably Google you guys as soon as this is over and I'm going to check out some podcasts, but we're a live podcast that we film. It's, it's live. So Thursday at 8 p.m. Pacific time, I'm in LA. Um, we go live. So if one of us does something really stupid, we can't take it back. But I think that's the best part about it, you know? Um, but it, it's, it's nice to be yourself and say, hey, this is who I am. I'm a ditzy Latina. I'm, I don't speak for all Latinas. I'm just ditzy in general. Um, but I, I like the idea that there's more Latinas now out there talking about how they grew up and, and social norms and breaking out of it. Like my thing has always been, yeah, you're going to tell me to wash the dishes and learn how to cook to, to keep my husband happy. Nah, I'm just going to break that stereotype right now. I'm going to let all of you know that. Um, which is again, why I'm a bad Latina. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, it's been great to hear you guys. I can't wait to check out some of your podcasts. Thank you, Stacy. That was awesome. So before we end tonight and take a group picture at the end, I'm going to turn it back over to Daniel. Um, the reason I'm going to turn it over to Daniel is because I feel, and I know that he's such an awesome motivational speaker. And I know that all of us are out there. We're filling everybody else's cup. And sometimes we, for, we forget to fill our own cup. And I think tonight before we end, all of us podcasters can use some motivation to keep going and keep living our passions and our dreams and keep spreading the world. So Daniel, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, first of all, everybody, give yourself a round of applause. Y'all were amazing. Everybody had an amazing story. It really, like, everybody here. And I want you to, I want you to dream bigger. I want you to realize this. I'm a, I'm a small kid from the south side of San Antonio. I grew up poor, right? And I love what Jennifer said. Jennifer said something that was huge that we all need to gravitate towards. You need to develop an abundance mindset. Because when I started speaking, right, think about this. I'm a Hispanic, five foot seven. Nobody knew who the hell Daniel Gomez was. But I said, you know what? God put a dream in my heart to be a motivational speaker. And they said, you? I was like, yeah, me. Check it out. Well, I said, you know what? The dream behind me is, is bigger. But check it out. God is bigger than anything you have. And don't under, undervalue who you are. Don't undervalue what you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're doing. All of y'all here have already started. If you would have told me I'm going to be a three-time international best-selling author, that I was going to have Evan Carmichael, the number one YouTuber with over 10,000 followers on my show with him, I wouldn't have believed it. But think bigger. Don't just say I have a podcast. Say I have a successful podcast. You got to shift your mindset, right? You're, doing, you're already doing it. Think about that. You're doing it. Maya, you're doing it. Belen, you're doing it. Maria, you're doing it. And, and, and I know, Maria, I love, Maria G, I love your, your, your authenticity, right? Because you got choked up. I heard your voice. And that's beautiful. But don't undervalue what you're doing. You're bringing value. And just be you. One thing I'll tell you, I have a top 200 podcast. And the way I got there is because I was Daniel Gomez. I didn't care what anybody said. I did what I wanted to do because there's enough freaking labels out there. And especially the Latinas here, stand up for who you are. Be proud of who you are. We're going to have a women's conference here, 10, 10, 20 in San Antonio, Texas. My wife is a breast cancer survivor, and I'm not talking smoke. I'm talking about what I've lived, right? I've had it all, but I've almost lost it all because when you lose, when you realize, when you lose a person you love, it doesn't matter. But I learned how to value people more. And I want you to think bigger. I want you to, I want you to start doing two things, right? If all of y'all here have podcasts, if you're not using Headliner, you need to go to Headliner and start using Headliner and doing a minute clip. And I want you to put image of, right? Image of your podcast. So whatever your podcast show is, put image of Watch Your Dichos, right? Or, or um, Berlin, whatever it is. And you get that minute clip and it's going to help your SEO. And as you put that SEO, you're going to, it's going to give you just, it's going to give your podcast more broadcasting. And when you're doing that, post it on Instagram, post that minute clip, right? And I want to encourage you to get guests on your show. I know a lot of you are doing single shows. That's great. But, but this is the thing. I love what Dre said, right? Invite people to your show and that potential guest might be one of your clients because you're going to develop that rapport. You're going to, you have to think monetize. You have to think money. And I love what Myra said. Myra's great. I love that. I have some respect for, um, for what she teaches, but I don't believe with all that because I believe that there's an abundance mindset that there's an abundance of money. If you would have told me I'm going to be where I'm at right now, I would have never believed it, but you can't be scared to take risk. And right now, Y'all are taking risks. Y'all are freaking crazy. Think about that. Y'all are crazy. Y'all have a podcast. You're already doing it. So why not give them something really to talk about? Because you know this, I'm going to tell you this. I want you to do yourself a favor and look at who in your life right now 
is supporting your podcast? Who's supporting what you're doing? And those are the people you want to keep in your life. And everybody do this right now. Do this right now with me. Get your hand, get your finger. You're the, you're the total sum of the five people you hang out with the most. So look at your fingers, right? And think about who's the one person that always talks shit about my podcast, that always is knocking what I do, that always critiques what I do. Who's that person? And you need to push them out to the outer limit of your circle. Not that you're better than them, right? Not that you're better than them, but you don't need that. Because critics are going to always criticize what they can't duplicate. Critics are always going to duplicate what they can't do. And believe me, people are, going to, people are going to support you to a certain extent. But then they say like, man, Eileen has a second episode. Wow. Ah, she got lucky. Hey, it's not luck. You're doing it. You're doing it. But I tell you that because I do this full time. I don't work for anybody. And I say that humbly. But I'm no better than anybody on this, on this all, all 14 of us here. I'm no better than anybody. I just didn't listen to what everybody else tell me. And I grew up, I'm Hispanic, trust me. And sometimes your own family, you got to push them out to the outer circle because those are the ones that are, right? Think about this. You're doing something no one's ever done in your family. The dream is for you. It's not for them. Say that with me. The dream is for me. The dream is for me. Myra said you wanted to leave it full. Why not? Make that vision. I want you to do another thing. Besides going to Headliner and start using the Headliner, get familiar with Headliner. It's a great thing. Just edit a minute clip. That way you can promote your podcast. I want you to write a, a, a list out of 100 people that you want on your podcast. I just had Tom Bill you on my show. I just had Forbes Riley, the number one, one of the most top uh, motivational speakers. She sold 2 billion stuff. But I just had, I had, um, she could soup for the soul. Uh, I can't think of his name. I got so excited, right? Um, geez, uh, Victor, Mark Victor Hansen. But I tell you this because what you focus on, you're going to attract into yourself. So expect to have great guests. Whatever your niche is, attract them. Gennaro, if you want to get the top chef on your show, aim for the top chef. Who, who, what's your niche? Focus on those top 100. Write it out. When, when you, something magical happens, when you put pen to paper, you're going to start attracting those people, those situations into your life. And believe me, what somebody said about monetizing, you can monetize your podcast. I just closed, I just closed a $1,500 deal today because I said, you know what? I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I got a top podcast. If you sign today, I'll get you on my podcast. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Guess what? I took her credit card over the phone and made 1500 But I don't say that to impress you, but I want to show you what's capable because you're already doing it. You're already doing it. And I want to support Hispanics. I want to support Latinas, Latinos. There's nothing that you can't do, but you got to start here. You got to shift that mindset because like Jennifer said, there's an abundance of business. There's an abundance of mindset. And you got to get rid of that scarcity mindset and know that whatever you want to do, that God is behind you and just do it for the good of the people. Add value. And when you add value, the people are going to want to help you. And I, I want to, I want to, I'm going to put my email here. And if anybody needs, I'm going to give all of y'all here because I love Felicia. She's a, she's a beautiful person and I like to support what she does. So if anybody needs a, a, a complimentary 20-minute uh, coaching session to elevate your podcast, you know, you got my time. And it's just my gift to you because I want to I wanna help you with that. And it's at daniel at danielgomezspeaker.com. And that's another thing. If you have a business, get away from the Yahoo, it's Gmail. No, you're a professional. Go out there, pay $25 for your email. That way you look like a professional because that's going to equate into money down the road. They're like, wow, you got your own speaker box? Yeah, I'm a professional. But I tell you that because no one taught me as a Hispanic. No one taught me as a Latino. And I'm telling you because most of us here are Latinos. And it doesn't matter, Dre, I, um, your partner out there, go out there and make it happen. It's, in, it's time that we stand up for what we believe in and walk the walk and talk the talk. And don't be scared to fail because I'm going to tell you, I have failed more than whatever these last three years. But I'm where I'm at because I have failed. I've cried. I have a saying, right? You're not a real entrepreneur until you've sat in the restroom and cried and you were 99% sure you were going to give up. And that quote was made up because that was me. I was crying in the bathroom and I said, what the hell am I doing here? Who am I kidding? But I had the courage to wipe off my tears and give it one more day and everything changed. And if you're at that point in your podcast where you want to give up, I have one listener, two listeners. It doesn't matter. Stop looking at the downloads. That's the worst thing you could do. Because if you're being consistent, 
the, cons the success comes into consistency and then you'll see everything else flourish. Just don't stop. Don't give up. And I want you to say this with me before I end, okay? Say it out loud because when you verbalize it, your subconscious mind knows your own mind. Say it with me. I matter. Say it. I matter. Then say this. My podcast matters. So whenever you feel like giving up, let those two affirmations carry you. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, Daniel. All right, before we let everybody go, because I'm crying already, and I'm a big crybaby, and I cry on my podcast, you could hear that too. <laughs> everybody smile, look at the camera, and say cheese. All right, happy International Podcast Day. Thank you all so much for joining us. I will get the recording out. Um, if you joined, um, because Brenda invited you, if y'all will please send her your Facebook, your handles to your podcast. I already wrote down everybody's Instagram handle. So when we post this, we can get everybody's information correctly. And if I invited you, I will get all that information from you as well. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for joining right, thank us. You. Thank Happy you, everybody. Podcast day. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a good Bye. evening. Good night, everybody. God bless y'all.